A happy new year to you, everybody. I don't mean to begin with a news that may not be very um, happy, but you know Father Tony Geraci. He has celebrated Mass uh, for our children here often and uh, celebrates Mass often at St. Helen Parish as well. His mom passed away last night and uh, I spoke to him this morning and he said she died on the feast of Mary, the mother of God, and nothing would thrill her more. So please keep, uh, keep her in our prayers. Her name is Helen Geraci. And of course, I'm going to offer this Mass as well for him, for her. I remember vividly, same time last year. 2019 was over. And I was warmly welcoming 2020. 2019 had been a very difficult year for us in Dayton. We had had the June tornadoes, and then the mass shootings in September, and the aftermath of all of that. And so when I stood here, celebrating Mass, I think along with me, everybody else was ready to bid 2019 a quick goodbye and warmly welcome 2020. But who could have thought that 2020 would make 2019 look good? Here we are. This year is different. Without doubt, we know that even though we have entered a new year, we are taking many of the problems of 2020 into 2021. First, we are still in a pandemic. Yes, we have a vaccine, and that is indeed good news, but it will be, hopefully, this time next year that we can say that we have safely put the pandemic behind us. Politically, we are hoping for a peaceful transition of administration, but it looks to me like much of the polarization, mistrust, and hate is sadly going to be continued into or carried into the next year, into this year. Sadly, we are also moving into the new year without many of our relatives, friends, and neighbors. How can we forget those we have lost to COVID-19? Many of us will carry much grief from the past year into the new year. And then, we're all looking forward to recovery and normalcy, isn't it? With our health, with financial security and well-being, with our mental and emotional state, with the education of our children and school, with family life, and for many of us, church, faith, and worship. We simply want to get back to normal, but it will be a slow process. So in this context, I would like to offer three things for us to reflect upon. My reflections are based totally on today's scripture. So let us pray that these reflections may indeed help us to find the strength and to approach this new year with some form of realism. So we'd like to begin with the first reading. God asks Moses to bless the people in these words. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. 
So as I read this reading, I reflected on how this blessedness can indeed be real. How can this blessing be a fact? Are these mere words? Or there is indeed a blessing in all of this? And here is how I answer this question for myself. Indeed, 2020 was a difficult year, and as I said, we are carrying many of our problems into 2021. But 2020 also revealed much goodness, beauty, humanity in the midst of all the crisis. Whoever thought that 2020 would bring to the forefront the real heroes of the world, healthcare workers, caregivers, delivery men and women, cleaners, teachers, parents juggling work, children, and stress. The heroes of the world are not people we often see on glossy magazines or television screens. And surely it is not the self-serving and narcissistic politicians. The heroes of the world are people you see next to you at school in grocery stores, in gas stations, in hospitals, in nursing homes, at church, those driving delivery trucks and those picking up your trash. And then there were other heroes, those who in the midst of crisis chose to simply be the face of goodness. I have to say this, I have not witnessed as much goodness and humanity as I've seen in 2020. Ordinary folks simply choosing to help another person. People grocery shopping for those at risk and homebound. Providing food for them to eat. Offering financial and other assistance and people going out of their way to bring comfort, companionship, and love to others. We learned the meaning of sacrifice, of selflessness, of patience, the value of health, of resilience, and the simple things of life. These two are God's blessings. The Lord has indeed blessed us. The Lord has let his face shine upon us. The Lord has been gracious to us. The Lord has indeed looked upon us kindly and given us peace. So my prayer is that, yes, being realistic, we understand that we will carry much of 2020 into 2021. And my prayer is that the blessings that have come to us in the last year continue even more in the coming year. Secondly, today we also celebrate the Feast of Mary, the Mother of God. As I have said numerous times before, feasts that celebrate Mary tell us more about Jesus than they tell us about Mary. The title, Mary, the Mother of God, tells us that Jesus, the Word made flesh, was indeed God. It took the church almost 450 years to define the true nature of Jesus, that he was fully God and fully human, fully divine, fully human, and then to give Mary the name Theotokos, or God-bearer. So today we, don't, we have the privilege of not having to define who God is or who Mary is, but to acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Mary as the mother of God. Even if the, it took the church 450 years to define these things, I believe Mary already knew. She knew that the one she carried within her womb was indeed God. Today's Gospel reading tells us, and Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. In spite of all that took place, 
Mary lived her life knowing that God was in her, with her, for her and the world. Folks, 2020 was a mixed bag of crisis and goodness. But like Mary, we live with the consciousness that God is with us, in us, for us and for the world. And like Mary, I propose that we keep all these things reflecting upon them in our heart. And here's my final reflection point. Yesterday, as is customary with me, I spend the last 15 minutes of the old year and the first 15 minutes of the new year in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. In preparation, I invited people on my social media accounts to post their intentions and thanksgiving. And I promised them that I would offer them to the Lord in prayer as I spent the final 15 minutes of the old year and the final 15 minutes of the new year in prayer before the sac Blessed Sacrament. Now, between Twitter and Facebook and direct messages, about 250 people posted their intentions, their thanksgiving, their personal petitions. Whereas many of these prayers were for family and personal needs, I was taken aback by an equal number of petitions for peace, for the grace to get along with each other, to work together, for reconciliation, for restoration and healing. One petition simply said this, please pray that this pandemic comes to a close and people once again become tolerant towards each other. If that does not say it all. People all over the world are tired of negativity, of hate, of name-calling, of intolerance, of lies, of xenophobia, of fanaticism. There is a deep longing to a return to a state of mutual goodwill, the ability to agree to disagree with respect, tolerance, humility, humanity, and simply civility. I'm not sure if the world and our nation will return to this. I'm really not sure. However, you and I can. Every new year presents each one of us an opportunity to begin anew. Let us be agents of change towards humanity, goodness, tolerance, respect, integrity, faith, and peace. Whatever the, near, whatever the new year holds for us, when we look back at 2021, may we be the reason why it still would be considered a year of blessings and goodness. This is my prayer. This Eucharist is a reminder to us that God is indeed with us. Let us bring ourselves, all that is dear to us, and our world, and place it before this altar. As Moses says, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord let his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us kindly and give us peace. Amen.